بن سکین صلوات علی محمد و آل محمد اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین بارئ الخلائق اجمعین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین وخاتم النبیین اب القاسم المصطفى محمد و اہل بیت طیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المظلومین الغر المیامین الذین اذہب اللہ انہم الرجس و تحرہم تطہیرہ ولانت اللہ علی آدائہم اجمعین من الآن الى قیام یوم الدین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولقد آتینا لقمان الحکمہ انشکر للہ ومن شکر ومن یشکر فإنما یشکرو لنفسه ومن کفر فإن اللہ غنی حمید وإذ قال لقمان لابنه وهو يعزو يا بني لا تشرك بالله إن الشرك لغلم عظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وآل محمد Respected brothers and sisters, before I start the discussion, uh, request of dua in Surah Al-Mubarakat Al-Fatiha for the Isali Sabab of the sponsors of tonight's iftar, uh, Ismail families, Marhumin, Tavar families, Marhumin, and Murji families, Marhumin, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم وغير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صلوات على محمد وآل محمد Surah Mubarakai Luqman's verses number 13, 12 and 13. 12 we explained, but just to connect the discussion. In verse number 12, the main theme of Surah starts, and that is Luqman's advice to his son. First Quran introduces Luqman in following verse. Certainly we rewarded Luqman with wisdom, saying give thanks to Allah and whoever gives thanks gives thanks only for his own sake and whoever is ungrateful let him know that Allah is indeed all-sufficient, all-praiseworthy. Shukran. This is introduction of Luqman. We discussed in detail last night. We spoke about what is hikmat. We speak about why shukr. Now, tonight, the advice itself starts. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِإِبْنِهِ 
wahuwa ya'idhu ya bunai remember remember bring to your mind when luqman said to his son as he advised him please wahuwa ya'idhu as he advised him ya bunayya oh my dear son la tushrik billah don't ascribe any partners to allah inna shirka la zulmun azim indeed polytheism or associating partners with allah is indeed a great operation a great injustice salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha okay in this verse lot of points to discuss and explore first of all headline of this conversation is mauiza wa huwa ya'izu mauiza i'm very sorry this light hurts my eyes but anyway with barakat of lord shedding alhamdulillah rabbil alamin mauiza that is the headline of this discussion mauiza or waaz or nasiha what we call it in our you know local language and you know in our day to day conversation nasiha was this is a particular way of you know inviting people toward you know haq toward good deeds toward you know right path but it is different than others nasihat or waaz or in english it is called advice comes from a little bit higher level to the lower level and also comes out of great deep concern of the person who is advising for the person who is advised and also it is in normally oral oral form you know talking speaking is involved this shows that muiza or waaz or nasiha or advice is important and no one is please listen carefully what i am trying to tell you muiza and advice is not you know telling something new or explaining a philosophy which person does not know mauiza is a sort of reminder i know that you know all these things but i advise you means what i remind you i speak in your ears to listen this is crucial this is important quran itself calls itself muiza muizatun mir rabb wa qad ja'atkum muizatun mir rabbikum in books of hadith there is a special chapter called al mawaiz the advices 
Amazing, amazing is this that even we find in history that Prophet used to say to Jibreel, Ayazni, advise me, advise me. Imams used to say that. And companions of Prophet and Ahlul Bayt used to come and ask Ahlul Bayt, Yabna Rasulullah, Ayazna, Ayazni, advise us, give us. Mu'iza. It means that Mu'iza is very important. It is very important. You know, and somebody said it beautifully, that in listening is an effect which does not have in just knowing. Huh? Are you with me? Listening has an effect from other person especially, than just reading and knowing yourself. Let me tell you, let me tell you. The same from this chapter of Mu'iza, or another word for this Mu'iza is what we call it Tazakkur. Tazakkur. And great ulama, Great scholars, the most pious of them, you know, after reaching to the highest level of spirituality and maqamat of irfan and mystical, you know, stations, still they used to believe that they need and they require Someone to remind them. Someone to vaz them, nasiha them, advise. No one is exception. Please listen carefully what I'm trying to make a point tonight, inshallah. No one is exception. Our beloved Imam, rahmatullahi alayhi, Imam Khomeini, rizwanullahi alayhi, for elevation of his soul, let us make a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He used to say, Allahu Akbar, I listened this from his direct student, Asha Hassan Sanayi, Ridwanullah, I know he's alive or he passed away. I told Asha Hassan Sanayi, who used to be in office. I listened myself. He used to say, Imam used to say, everyone requires muzakir. Muzakir means reminder, means someone who must give you nasiha and advice. Mu'iza. Imam used to say, even Sheikh Ansari, Allahu Akbar, Sheikh Murtaza Ansari, Ridwanullahi alayhi, Sheikhul Fuqaha, Ustazul Fuqaha, Allahu Akbar. Now, if I want to speak about who is Sheikh Ansari, another two hours possible to speak about. One of the giants of Shia fiqh, Shia academics, and piety and taqwa, Allahu Akbar. On extreme, Sheikh Ansari. He is buried, inshallah, may Allah grant you ziyarat of Najaf. When you go into Haram of Mawla Amir al muminin and you enter from Babul Qibla on your right hand side, if I'm not mistaken, left or right, I think left side, he is buried there. Sheikh Murtaza Ansari. Allahu Akbar. Anyway, he, Imam Khomeini used to say, Sheikh Murtaza Ansari was Tali Tilwe Ismat. Means what? That Sheikh Ansari was on that step which is just immediately after infallibility. Can you imagine? Just on a level, on a step below infallibility. Even he needs muzakir. Even he requires somebody to shake him, somebody to Mu'izah him. 
دن امام خمینی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ یوسٹو سے مائی مذکر مائی واعظ مائی نصیحہ پر سنواز مرحوم آیت اللہ شاہ آبادی رضوان اللہ علیہ صلوات اللہ محمد و علیہ محمد So brothers and sisters, first lesson tonight is very important lesson. No one of us, if Sheikh Ansari, if Imam Khomeini, if Marhum As Ali Qazi Thaba Thabai, if, for example, other great scholars and orafa, they are not immune from Muzakir. Who are we? Nothing. All of us. All of us. I'm telling you, Prophet used to say to Jibreel Izni, Allahu Akbar. Salman of Farsi, of that level, used to say to Amir al-Mumnin, advise me, shake me, shake me, remind me. Allahu Akbar. This is important. No one of us. And therefore, we should never get upset. We should never get cross if someone gives advice to us. If someone reminds us of something, that reminder is a ni'mat of Allah, is a favor of Allah. Arrogance is the disease of shirk, and which we will inshallah talk tonight if time allowed. You know, this first part took too much time. But, you know, humility, humbleness, tawazo, demands. You know, if I want to really explain to you, brothers, you know, one of the hadiths which says, Al-Mu'minu mir'atu al-Mu'min. Mu'min is mirror of a mu'min. Lot of issues are there, but one of the issues is this. Look, mirror shows you all your weak points. If on your face there is a black spot, there is a dryness, there is some other problem, if you look at mirror, mirror will tell you. Mu'min is a mirror to a mu'min. He will be honest with you and he will tell you, you got this problem, you got this defect, you got this shortcoming. So if someone comes and shows you, reminds you and indicates your weaknesses, Allahu Akbar, don't get upset, huh? Don't get upset. Say shukran. Say thank you. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So this is the meaning of mo'iza. Is ghala luqman li ibnihi. When luqman said to his son. Very important lesson even in this word. Very important lesson. Communication between father and son is important, is necessary. Responsibility of a father is to speak and to talk and to advise and to guide the children. Very important lesson. Then how Luqman addressed his son, another very beautiful lesson. Ya Bunaya. Ya Bunaya, as you say in the translations, it is written, O oh my son. But if I want to translate it a little bit freely to convey you the exact message there, my son is correct, but in fact it means my darling, my honey. My dear, like that. It's not just my son. No, no, no. Ya bunaya. Oh, my dear son. Oh, my loving son. Oh, my honey. Something like that. Ya bunaya. This is the way father addresses the son. Okay. This shows one very important point. That... Advice must be always along with love and compassion. Not with a stick. 
to hit and shout and reprimand. No. No. Must be with emotional element and love. Okay. Another very important point. We will reach there. That when you speak to your children and your son or daughters, you must speak and advise very good. But your advice must be rational. Please listen carefully. Your advice must be rational. Your advice must have proof, must have dalil, argument, reasoning also allowed. In this uh, conversation or advice, Luqman says to his son, La tu shirk billah. Don't commit shirk. Inshallah, we'll speak about in detail. But this portion I wanted to discuss before. Inna shirka la zulmun azim. Don't commit shirk. But then Luqman gives reason, rationality. You know why you don't, you must not commit shirk? Because shirk is a great injustice. It's a great operation. Huh? Provided argument. Dalil. Very, very important. Okay. Let us now go what Luqman advised to his son. What is his first advice? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. First advice of Luqman is La tushrik billah. Don't associate partners with Allah. Tawheed. Okay. Here, brothers and sisters, I would like to draw your attention again in the chapter of Tarbiyat, in the chapter of development, grooming, and, uh, you know, bringing up of the children. MashaAllah, so many parents are sitting, so many mothers are sitting, so many fathers are sitting. Important point is here. The message is, normally, normally, when we make nasiha and advice to our children, we always focus on uh, amal and deeds. Never lie, huh? never do this, huh? uh, never backbite, I don't endeavor, don't steal, uh, always speak truth, don't uh, be disrespectful, all those things. But all that is related to actions, amal and deed. But Luqman is teaching us that before you speak about amal and actions, in tarbiyat, ideology is crucial and clear, it is important. First, you need to make the mind of your child and your children clean and clear and give them a clear vision. Ideology is important. Huh. And this is a reality. I would like to again, as I always say every night, let us draw the lessons home. That we teach our children, make namaz, fast, this, all the good habits, make Quran, hifz, I don't know, do this, do that, all those things we say. And especially in the broader Muslim community, this problem is very, very deep. But we don't talk about ideology. We don't teach him basis of the deen. We don't teach him Tawheed. We don't teach them, you know, Islamic belief system. Especially Tawheed. Especially this chapter of Tawheed. So what happens? That Alhamdulillah, child becomes very pious apparently. And, you know, namaz also, fast also, this also, maybe little bit beard also, topi also, kurta also, all that is there. But as soon as he comes or she comes across 
to a situation where aqeedah and ideology and thought is challenged, I have nothing to fight back other than tradition and culture and habits. Now, some people who are not thinking people, they're not, their minds are just traditional minds. They think whatever my parents said, that is right, and we will, that's one part of, so they carry on. But those people who have critical minds, thinking minds, rational approach, they, oh, they get a shock of life. Oh, somebody, atheist, comes to them and says, where is a God, man? What nonsense are you talking about? There is no God. Where is God? Somebody comes with something else. Somebody comes with something else. Especially in university, in the high school, and so on and so on. And now even don't even have to go to university and high schools. Internet and I don't know. Ayatollah Google, huh? Right. Now, child is lost. And you will see the same person a few days ago, a few months ago, a few years ago, appear to be a very pious child. As soon as he came into a secular environment, in an environment where deen was challenged, he will turn 180 degree against. Right or not, huh? We have experienced children coming, huh, brother, from very, very religious and culturally strong communities and backgrounds. But in a matter of minutes, they turn other way and they lose any interest in deen and religion and values. Very important. And my dear brother Bashir, Rahim, Haj Bashir Rahim, principal of our madrasa is sitting here. And we in our madrasa try our best to balance this huh? and to emphasize on ideology that you must accept Tawheed, the existence of Allah, the oneness of Allah, the attributes of Allah, and all other chapters of aqaid or faith or what we call them usul deen or roots of religion with reasoning, with rationality, with giving them to think, with giving them opportunity to reflect. Just, you know, making them like parrots, it's not. All the emphasis on hips of Quran, very good no doubt about it. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm one of the greatest supporters of hips of Quran. Hips of Quran must be there. Recitation of Quran must be there. All those rituals must be there. But ideologically, also, it is extremely important to strengthen. Therefore, Luqman is started from Tawheed. La tushrik billah, inna shirka la zulmun azim. Why he did? Because Luqman was Hakim. Because Luqman was wise. Wisdom demanded that it start from roots. And therefore, he started from roots. Tawheed. Tawheed. Everything is summarized in Tawheed. Every good is summarized in Tawheed. Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. And every evil, every evil is summarized in shirk. Any sin, any wrong thing, you find, if you go deeply, you will find, finally it comes back to shirk. Because it either goes to love of dunya, which is a shirk, basically part of shirk, or it comes to, you know, self-admiration or ego, also shirk. Or when you accept Authority for the people other than God, that is also shirk. Huh? When you believe in superiority of anything other than Almighty Allah, then it is shirk. And from there branches out all the sins, all the evils, all the wrong things. Therefore, I can speak about it in great detail. I'm not going, I need to really, inshallah, finish Surah Mubarak al luqman in these coming few nights, inshallah. So this is, this is really, really very important for us to understand 
توحید این شرک شرک اللہ اکبر یو نو آئی آلویز ریمبر وٹ امام سیڈ اباؤٹ بنی امیہ بنی امیہ یوز ٹو ٹیچ ایوری تھنگ اباؤٹ ریلیجن بٹ نیور یوز ٹو ٹیچ شرک امام سیز یو نو وائی بیکاز اف پیپل ول انڈرسٹینڈ ریئل میننگ آف شرک they will never ever will surrender and obey Bani Umayya. Inna shirka la zulmun azim. Shirk is the greatest of injustice. Why? You know why? Because in shirk there are three injustices or three operations included. First of all, when you associate anyone with Allah, You oppress Allah. Because who can be really even you can think of somebody to be associated with Allah. So you oppress Allah first of all. Number two, you oppress yourself. Oh, you know why? Because by associating anyone with Allah, you bring yourself down to the level where you will bow down before something which is more and less like yourself. So you are unfair to yourself. And number three, you are unfair and unjust to the people because by associating partner with Allah, you are promoting something which will get this whole community get lost and will be indulged in slavery and chains. Ah. Job of Tawheed is, brothers and sisters, to liberate you, to liberate you, to free you. Shirk is slavery. Shirk is chain. I just now said to you, shirk, look, on the highest level of it or very apparent level of it is what? To worship idols. If you bow down in front of the idols, you say, he's mushrik because he's thinking that these idols are associate with God. Or for example, you say, Jesus is son of God, for example. Or for example, you say that there are two gods, God of good and God of evil, like Zoroastrians, for example. Or for example, you say that, I don't know, this animal is also God, sun is God, a star is God. So, so these are very apparent examples, very open examples of, of course, shirk. But shirk is not confined to that. Please listen carefully. Quran says, majority of believers, unfortunately, are mushrik. How? Majority of believers are mushrik. Wahum yushrikun. They are at the one time mu'min, And at the same time, they are mushrik as well. How that is possible? Because, yes, when it comes to the word God, they say only Allah is our God, Allah is our creator, Allah is our master. But in practical life, when it comes, they don't accept authority of Allah. They accept themselves, their desires, their Didn't you see that person who takes his desires as is his God or God's? So you take your, me, I take and you take our desires, our ego as our God's. We worship them. Huh? We worship them. They become our qibla. They become our direction. That's shirk. Of course not shirk on a level where you'll become kafir or mushrik. But in, in its deeper sense, it is shirk. If person is really muvahid, if person is really, really monotheist, in other words, worshipper of one God, he will never believe, he will never surrender to any authority, to any 
power to any superiority of anyone other than Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Neither culturally, nor morally, nor even politically, nor even politically, a real Muwahid believes in divine system of governance and therefore believes, again comes back to the point, Marifat of Imam Zaman. Ah, he believes in divine system of governance. So if he deviates from divine system of governance, he becomes involved in shirk, for example. Other, of course, for secondary reasons, something else, but primarily, principle by default, that must be in our mind very clear that even political system, only divine governance system of imamat, divine governance system of Almighty Allah's rule, salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Inna shirka la zulmun azim. One or two other important points left in this chapter. Shirk, as I said, inshallah, tomorrow, but just let me give you headlines of those dishes. Shirk, you know, sometimes also misunderstood. I explained to you shirk, and I will explain further, tawheed, inshallah, tomorrow night. But some people, get mixed up deliberately or somehow under influence and they think that if we respect for example friends of Allah and we seek their tawassul for example this is also shirk فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ Don't call with Allah anyone ahada only call Allah so if you call anybody else, if you say, for example, Ya Rasulullah, if you say, for example, Ya Ali, so you are committing shirk because you are calling them and you're supposed to call only and only Allah. There is a bit of a mix-up huh? from real tawheed to a very, you know, surface level understanding of these verses of Quran. Inshallah, this is a small... I will not going to go in great details of discussion about tawassul, but one or two important points, inshallah, in this regard. I will, inshallah, be in service of you, brothers and sisters, tomorrow night. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I hope, I hope these discussions, inshallah, will be beneficial for ourselves and for all of us, inshallah. Once again I say, we all of us require regular tazakkur, regular reminder, Allahu Akbar, to save us, to protect us from deviation, inshallah, inshallah. Tomorrow night, no iftar, no iftar by material food, but spiritual iftar is on, huh? Now, who is interested, we'll see you tomorrow night, inshallah. Ah, all of a sudden, hall becomes empty, huh? Tomorrow night, inshallah, we have some other, I have some other commitment. I will apologize. Tomorrow night, half past eight, inshallah, we will start with Salat of Isha and, of course, lecture. Fifteen minutes late tomorrow night. Half past eight, inshallah, we will start. Exceptionally only for tomorrow night. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs>